previously. Previously, we discussed the band theory of solids. Now, we're going to use this theory to help us explain why certain solids are good conductors of electricity. And let's begin by recalling what the band theory of solids is. So the electronic band theory or the band theory of electrons of metal solids basically describes the possible energy quantum states that an electron inside that metal solid can be found in. Now in metal solids we have individual metal atoms that combine the electron probability distributions of the outer electrons to form many possible energy values of quantum states. In fact, there are so many energy values that we can think of this energy as forming a continuous band of energy quantum states. And that's exactly why we call it a band theory. So basically, the electronic band theory of solids describes the different energy values for the quantum states that the lack electrons can actually take. And because we have so many atoms combining inside our solid to actually form that solid structure, we have a continuous band of energy values that represents each particular quantum state. Now, now we're going to actually use the electronic band theory to help explain why certain solids are good conductors of electricity. And we're going to focus specifically on the solid sodium. So in solid sodium we have a lot of different atoms combining and each atom is basically its own sodium atom. Now let's examine the following diagram that basically describes what our structure actually looks like. So remember in solid sodium we have a crystalline structure. We have a crystal lattice that is formed. So basically we have the following nuclei of our atoms of the sodium atoms and these nuclei essentially form metallic bonds. Now remember because our electrons are essentially trapped inside our solid structure, that means we can imagine that our solid metal is like a finite potential well, a rigid box. And that's exactly what this diagram describes. So we spoke about this diagram in greater detail in the previous lecture. So basically the y-axis gives us the energy and the x-axis basically contains our four nuclei. Now of course we have many more nuclei, but to save space we only show four nuclei. Now notice as we go higher the energy increases. As we go lower the energy decreases and becomes more negative. Now this line corresponds to a potential energy of zero and as we go lower the potential energy basically decreases. These red regions correspond to our potential well barrier, our electric potential barrier and these are our finite potential wells. Now the blue regions correspond to our continuous band. This lower region corresponds to the electrons found in the 1s state. This corresponds to the band to the electrons found in the 2s quantum state. This corresponds to the 2p and this corresponds to our 3s. So basically this can be rewritten or redrawn in the following way. We have our electrons found in the 1s, the electrons found in the 2s, in the 2p, as well as the 3s. Now notice the 3s continuous band is only halfway filled, so it's half empty and that means there are empty or unoccupied quantum states that exist within this 3s band. The question is why does that actually take place? 
Well, let's recall that within our solid sodium, each sodium atom, when it's by itself, it basically has an electron configuration in which one electron is found in the outer 3s shell. And that basically means because the 3s shell can have a maximum of two electrons and it only contains one electron, that means it's only halfway filled. So it's halfway empty. So each sodium atom contains one electron in the 3s quantum state. Now when we combine all these individual sodium atom atoms to actually form the solid sodium metal, the electron densities of, the, of, of these individual 3s electron clouds basically overlap to combine the 3s electronic band for the sodium solid metal as shown in the following diagram. Now, if we combine, let's say, capital N number of sodium atoms to actually form our metal structure, that means each one of these sodium atoms will have one electron in the 3s quantum state. And that means when we combine N number of 3s quantum states, we form a band that also contains N electrons. And since each sodium atom had a 3s state that only had one electron, so it was half filled, the 3s band that is formed for our sodium metal will also be halfway filled. So this is described in the following diagram. So basically we're combining uppercase N number of sodium atoms and each one of these sodium atoms has one electron in the 3s quantum states. Now we have not shown the 1s, 2s, and 2p, so we omitted these for simplicity. So we have one electron in each one of these quantum states. So that means it's only halfway filled. So if we combine all these to form the 3s band spectrum, that means only half of this will be actually filled. So this implies that if we only have n electrons in the 3s band and it contains a total of 2n quantum states because before each atom, each individual sodium atom had our 3s halfway empty, there are 2n minus n, so equals n possible unoccupied quantum states. So that means if an electron within this area gains a certain amount of energy that will be enough to overcome this potential barrier, it will basically jump to one of these unoccupied states. And when many electrons jump to these unoccupied states, they create a flow of electrons and that basically creates an electric current and that's exactly why solid sodium as well as other metal atoms are good conductors of electricity. So once again this means that when we apply a voltage difference across our metal or solid metal these electrons increase in energy and jump to these empty or unoccupied quantum states and this in turn creates an electron flow and therefore creates an electric current and this makes sodium and other atoms and other uh, solid metals good conductors. So this basically explains why certain metal solids are good conductors. So we saw that we can use the band theory of metals, the band theory of solids, to help explain why certain certain metal solids such as solid sodium is a good conductor of electricity.